Jesus glad and the devil mad. Amen. Let's rejoice. Bibles and wave them around, make Jesus glad, the devil mad. Let's get into the Word tonight, be encouraged by the Word of God. Let's say this together. Say, Heavenly Father, I've tuned in tonight on purpose because I am hungry for the Word, eager for the Holy Spirit to shine His light on the Word. Give me revelation where my faith is built and my spirit is nourished, and I will overcome every obstacle in Jesus' name, amen. And that's what we are. We are overcomers. Let's turn in our Bibles to Mark chapter 4, and, uh, and let's start reading with verse 35. And, of course, this is uh, right after Jesus had uh, preached from the boat and given his uh, parable of the sower sows the word. And in verse 35, the same day when the evening was come, he said unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship, and there was also with him other little ships. And there rose a great storm of wind. You know, the word great is mega, a mega storm. And, uh, and waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow, and they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose, and he rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm, a mega calm. <laughs> Here we had a mega storm, now there's a mega calm. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? And so tonight I just wanted to encourage you with this message, don't sweat the storm. <laughs> don't sweat the storm. I'll tell you, uh, storms of life come to all. Uh, you know, uh, maybe, you know, maybe not a literal wind and waves. Maybe you're not a boater. <laughs> maybe you don't go out. But I mean figurative storms, storms of life, storms of, in relationships, storms in your finances, storms in your health. And, uh, you know, when I first got saved and, and sat under the word of faith, my immature way of looking at it was, hey, if I can just get enough faith, uh, it'll prevent the storms. And then somebody gave me a cassette tape of this woman. It was a woman preacher, by the way. She had a real southern accent. It sounded like she was from Alabama or Georgia or something like that. And, uh, and she said, you know, you're just uh, fixing to go into a mess. You in a mess or you coming out of a mess. <laughs> and I, threw, I ejected the tape and threw it in the back seat. I said, I'm not listening to this. This is, <laughs> this is false. This is a false teacher. <laughs> I was really steamed until I learned better. No, oh, the Bible's filled with people that, that go through storms. In fact, really, uh, when you have faith, that's a reason for the storm to come. The devil's always coming against your move of faith. It won't stop all storms, but it certainly will uh, cause God to invade that storm and turn things around. You know, the devil <clears throat> is always trying to do one thing. He's trying to kill you, and if he can't kill you, then he wants to, you know, stop you. And if he can't stop you, he wants to delay you. And then I heard another preacher one time, and, and, and one of the main things the devil tries to do is discredit you. I mean, you know, he spends a lot of time trying to figure out how to discredit you, how to, how to rob you of your witness and uh, to where people won't listen to you. So, uh, you know, uh, storms, really, though, if we, if we look at it from the biblical side, just think about Jesus. You know, they're on a, on a, they have a mega storm. There's mega waves. And then instantly, you know, he rebukes the storm, and then he speaks to the sea, peace be still, and there was a great calm, a mega calm. So how, if you talk about supernatural, the Bible doesn't say that, you know, in a couple of hours the sea kind of, you know, kind of played out. No, I mean, it just went whoosh, flat. I, I've been out in the Gulf, and uh, I've been in the conditions where there was no wind. It was just flat out there, and just a gentle roll. 
You know, you could, you know, you were on the ocean because there was a general rule, but there were no waves. There was no, there was no white water. There was no ripples. I mean, it was just so, it was like glass. And, uh, you know, for the, wet, to, for the sea to be stormy and then suddenly be like glass, that's what happened. And, uh, and they said, what manner of man is this? I mean, it was supernatural. And so, uh, you know, they made it across. And, uh, and so storms are, are a dead giveaway that breakthroughs and miracles and blessings are in front because the devil is fighting hard to stop you. So uh, just, just take it that way instead of as a bad thing. Take it as an opportunity that you're going to overcome it and get on the other side. You know, that's what happened to uh, Paul in Acts chapter 27. You know, he perceived that the voyage, you know, they were, he was held captive, and they, well, he was on a ship. They had sailed over into this place, in this port, and then they decided to, to leave there go to the next place. And he perceived that, the, that it was going to be a troubled voyage, so he went to the captain uh, of the guard, and he went to the owner of the ship. And, and he said, look, I perceive that this voyage will be with much hurt, both of our lives and of the lading of the ship. And they didn't listen to him. But because he warned them, uh, they got out there, and there was a terrible storm, a mega storm. You know, water was hitting them real hard. And, and at one point in the voyage, it says that all hope that they should be saved was taken away. Well, God didn't take it away. Who took it away? The one who sent the storm, <laughs> the devil. He wanted them to give up. And at the height of the storm, at the worst part of the storm, you could say at midnight, then the angel of the Lord appeared unto Paul. And what did he say to him? Fear not. Fear not, Paul. And so, and, uh, and so God invaded the storm. He said, you know, God, I've given all those who sail with you. You're, you're going to be Okay. But the ship is not going to be okay. You know, they had to, they had to, they had to leave the ship on broken pieces and, and, and fight their way to the, to the Isle of Malta. They were, they, were, they were grounded there, and the waves beat the ship up. And, uh, and God invaded that storm, and he went and, and survived. Every single person survived that storm. Nobody thought they would. They all survived. And they get over on the Isle of Malta, and uh, the governor of the island was sick, and uh, Paul healed, the, you know, healed him, and Jesus healed him through Paul. And he preached the gospel, and that whole island got saved. And so you can see how God invaded the storm and turned something good out of something terrible. It's like, like God said to the devil, since you tried to kill my servant, Paul, and prevent him from uh, witnessing to Caesar in Rome, I'm going to use my servant to set Malta free besides. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to have a bonus on this thing. You're going to get defeated double. <laughs> so don't sweat the storm. I mean, you know, let's not lose our courage. And, uh, and, let's, and let's remind ourselves. I know many of you have heard these messages before, but sometimes we need to hear things over and over again. And uh, so let's, uh, let's let this message be water if we've heard it before. And let's let it be seed if we need to hear something new out of, these, out of these illustrations and these verses. So I've got three things I wanted to share with you tonight about uh, to remember. That's one of the things that's easy to do is to forget. So the first thing to remember is God turns what the devil means for evil into good. Remember that song we've been singing lately, you know. And uh, well, where is that? I don't know where that's found. Well, Romans 28, it doesn't say this in so many words, but this is what it means. Romans 28. Excuse me, Romans 8. <laughs> There's no 28. <laughs> Romans 8, 28. And it says, uh, and we know that all things, all things, work together for good to them that love God, to them that are, are the called according to his purpose. So whatever's happening, whatever a storm is happening, it's, it's going to work for good. God is going to turn it into good. The storm is not good. See, people get this all fouled up, and they start praising God for the storm. Well, the storm is good. No, the storm is evil. It's sent by the devil. The devil cannot do anything that's good. It's God who's good, and he, in, he will invade the storm and turn it. It'll turn. And so let's get our thinking straight. 
Uh, for instance, that's exactly what happened in Acts 27. The storm was sent to kill all of them. But God invaded the storm and saved the, the governor of Malta and sent revival to the island. And then Paul wound up in Rome anyway. Uh, the same in Acts chapter 16, Paul and Silas uh, waited for the will of the Lord and they, they waited to go to Macedonia and they were in the will of God. They were beaten with many stripes, thrown into the inner prison. And at midnight, Paul and Silas, the Bible says, prayed and sang praises and all of the prisoners heard them. And it stirred the devil up so much that he sent an earthquake to try to kill them, to just bring the walls of the prison down on top of Paul and Silas and the rest of them. He was intended to kill them right there on the spot. And what did God do? God invaded the earthquake and caused the earthquake to break them out of jail. Their, their, their chains fell off of their, their hands and feet. The stocks broke. The cell doors opened. I mean, that was supernatural in the positive. God invaded the storm. And the, and the jailer was going to kill himself. And he said, do yourself no harm. We're all still here. And they, they got the jailer saved. They preached the gospel to him and his entire family. They all got baptized. They got saved. You know, uh, the Bible doesn't say this, but uh, certain books say that that was the, that was the man that, that started a church there in Macedonia. The jailer got saved and became a pastor. <laughs> and so, uh, and then they washed their stripes and, and ministered to them. And so God turned what the devil meant for evil into good. So remember that. Number two, remember that storms are a revelation of good days ahead. See, that's why the storm has come. It's not God teaching you a lesson. You know, as a lot of people think that. Well, God allowed. God, get God allowed out of your vocabulary. Get God permitted. Get all that kind of thing out of your vocabulary because God allows everything we allow. And just because we're going through a storm don't, doesn't mean that we have to put up with it all the way to the end. Let's rebuke it like Jesus. And so, uh, and so <clears throat> you have to uh, absolutely rebuke fear. You can't afford uh, to, to be fearful in a storm of life. Maybe your marriage is going through a trial. Maybe it looks like you're just not going to make it. Well, don't be fearful. Just pray in the Holy Ghost and rebuke the devil. He's the one that wants to break up a marriage. He's the one that's trying to sow discord. Now, maybe you've got trouble at work. Maybe you've got trouble with your boss. Maybe you've got trouble in your finances. Look, all of these things people go through, uh, they're not the will of God for your life. In fact, they're a revelation that God wants to break you through, and this is just the, this is the enemy's attempt to stop it from happening. You know, Paul said one time, he said, there are great doors and effectual open unto me. You know, that's a blessing. And then, and then he said, and there are many adversaries. <laughs> so the greater the opportunity that's in front of you, the greater the resistance the devil is going to throw at you to try to get you to, to, to stop you. And so, uh, so they, uh, they were broken out of jail, and, and God turned what was evil into good. So don't sweat the storm. Don't fear. Rejoice. I mean rejoice. Why would you rejoice over the storm? No, you're rejoicing because you're going to, you're victorious over the storm. You're rejoicing because of what's behind the storm. I like what Brother Mark uh, Hankins said one time. He said, you know, if we only knew what was by, on the other side of the mountain, we wouldn't delay in moving the mountain out of the way. <laughs> There's something great behind the storm. There's something great ahead of you. And so uh, just, uh, just overcome that thing. Don't be afraid of it. And then the last one is, remember, rise up with the word of God and the name of Jesus and rebuke the storm. You know, I mean, sometimes there's real storms like hurricanes. I can't count the kind of prayer this church is, is exercised on all kinds of storms. Hurricanes, you name it, all kinds of things that have happened, uh, you know, natural things. But then there are other types, like I said, there's other kinds of storms. And, uh, and so Jesus rebuked them, see? And then he, in the middle of it, peace, be still. Isn't that, wasn't that, isn't that what happens in a storm is there's confusion, there's chaos. You know, you don't know which end is up. You know, I mean, uh, I, I remember one time, uh, I've done a lot of flying in small uh, single engine aircraft, you know, so that's, this was just private aviation. I had a partner that had a Cessna 206, which is a workhorse uh, 
aircraft, and uh, we were flying out to our deer lease out in the hill country. We were really south of the hill country in a place called Rock Springs. We had cleared this area out, and the great thing about that Cessna is that it was a great short field land and takeoff airplane. It would just it would just drop out of the sky and land on a very short field. It would take off on that field. So we had developed a little grass airstrip right on our, our, uh, our deer lease. So he and I were headed out there, and, and several other of our uh, partners were already there. They had driven by car. We were coming by plane. And uh, thank God he was instrument rated. Instrument rated means that he had gotten that part satisfied in his pilot's license where he could, he could uh, fly the plane in inclement weather. In other words, instrument rated means when you get up to altitude, you can't see the ground. And if you're just VFR, visual flight rules, if you're just a VFR pilot, you cannot fly. And if you come across those kind of conditions, you must land the plane. You can't fly in those, in those conditions. But he was instrument rated, so he could fly. And I wasn't uncomfortable. Like we could still see the sky. We could see, you know, we had a visibility. But sooner, soon we got over Austin, and uh, it socked in to where we couldn't see the tips of the wings. I couldn't see the propeller in front of the windshield. I mean, it's just, it's white. It's completely whited out. And we're bouncing up and down because we're flying through a front. A cold front was coming in, and we were flying through that front. It was turbulent. We were at about, I don't know, 6,000 feet. And, uh, and so I had my eyes glued. I had my eyes glued on the instruments because that's the only thing I could trust. I have read that without instruments in those kind of conditions, you have exactly 90 seconds before vertigo takes you over, and you will not know how to fly the plane. A lot of people think that's what happened to JFK Jr. when he flew his plane into the Atlantic Ocean off of Martha's Vineyard years ago. You know, he was a young pilot, and he was not IFR rated, and he was flying in illegal conditions for him. And what happened? Well, he got vertigo, and he, instead of, instead of flying the plane straight and level or, or climbing to try to get above the, the haze, he flew the plane right into the into the ground. Well, I, I can relate to that because my body felt in that storm, my body felt like we were descending at a high rate of speed, descending and going to the right. I mean, my body told me all my signals, my body tells me I'm going down to the right. And of course, my heart came up in my throat. I'm thinking, why are we going down? Why are we descending? Well, we weren't, because when I looked at the instruments, I've been, you know, I'm over in the right seat, so I look over to the left, and we're going up and to the left. <laughs> we were going exactly opposite of what my body was telling me. And so I learned, I'm not a pilot, but I learned that I couldn't trust my senses. And this is what I'm talking about. These are your instruments right here. This is what you trust. <laughs> Don't trust your five senses when you're in a storm, because why? It's chaos. Things are crazy. Things are spinning out of control in some cases. You're getting a bad report from the doctor. Your boss is giving you trouble. All kind of things happen in a storm. You've got to, you've got to keep, keep your cool. Don't sweat the storm. Amen. So rise up with a word and rebuke the storm like Jesus did. And uh, I think about what the disciples said. Wow. Wow, when they saw that mega calm. I mean, they're fishermen. They know what it, they know that when the, when the water's stirred up like that, it doesn't just turn flat. I mean, it's hours before it calms down. And here it was like glass, a mega calm. I mean, Greek words, you know, Jesus, uh, the word doesn't, doesn't exaggerate. It's exactly what the Bible says it was. It was a mega calm. And they were amazed. They said, what manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Well, guess what? We're the same manner of people that Jesus is because we're in him. Amen. When we begin to rebuke the storm and we speak to the wind and the waves, peace be still, it has to obey us. You know, years ago, of course, this, this 
testimony I gave about the airplane, I wasn't saved in those days, so I didn't do any praying. I had no idea how to pray. If I'd have prayed, I didn't know how to pray. God just had mercy on my soul. <laughs> but anyway, but uh, after I did get saved a few years, I've been sitting under wor good word of faith teaching, Brother John Osteen. And uh, my wife and I went to bed one night. I think it was a Friday night. And uh, <clears throat> we woke up 2 o'clock in the morning with all this uh, lightning storm, thunder and lightning. It was violent. Wind was howling. And I, you awake from a deep sleep. I mean, 2 o'clock in the morning, you're sawing logs. And all of a sudden, you wake up. And I'm, I'm just confused. The lightning is flashing through our window. Our bed was, we were on the second floor. Uh, our master bedroom's on the second floor. So I looked out the window and uh, could see nothing. The water was just beating against the window. And I could see every time it was lightning, just once, one after, those flashes were coming one after another. I could see the trees were whirling around, twisting around. And then I heard it. I heard what sounded like a freight train. And I had never heard of a tornado. I had never been in a tornado before. But I'd always heard they sound like a freight train. And sure enough, this thing sounded like a freight train was coming right through our house. I mean, it was just loud. And I just instantly went into a rage. I was so angry at the devil. It's supernatural because, you know, how do you come out of a sleep and get mad? I mean, you know, I, got, I came out of a deep sleep. I was a little bit not fearful but apprehensive about the weather. And then when I heard that, that, that tornado, I got angry, and I began to rebuke the devil. I began to rebuke the storm. I commanded, peace be still. And just instantly, I mean not 10 minutes later, not 10 seconds later, instantly when I quit speaking, the level of all of that noise and chaos reduced by about 50%. And it just seemed to really, it didn't completely calm down, but it just was gone. There was no more freight train noise. The lightning quit being so bad. It didn't hear that much thunder. It was still off in the distance. So I went back to bed, woke up to the sound of chainsaws the next morning about 6.30, Saturday morning. I look out the window, and I, I see it looked like a war zone on my street. It was just trees, it was, and my neighbors, their trees were leaning up against their roofs. It come, you know, uprooted in their front yard, broke off. Uh, in my yard, I didn't see anything major, but I saw a bunch of debris, a bunch of limbs, not little, uh, really more like foliage. So I got dressed real quick and went out downstairs, went out the front door. And it was bad on my street, but my house was not really hurt at all. I didn't have anything, any damage. All I could find was a, about three foot of ridge row on my garage. We had a hip roof on my garage. And where the, where the ridge is, there's a ridge row, a row of shingles that covers that, and it was ripped off, and that was the only damage that I could find on my house. We had no leaks. We had no damage whatsoever. And I was building houses in the neighborhood, so I went to check on my houses. No, no damage on the houses. So when I turned around and went up to Louetta Road, it looked like a gigantic uh, lawnmower had come down and mowed all of the pine trees off at the same level, about 15 feet off the ground. All they were were pine trees sticking up in the air. You know, pine trees have all the foliage mostly up at the top. And so there was no foliage left, just pine sticks sticking out there at the, in the field across our, from our subdivision right on Louetta Road. And uh, I found out later that 18 tornadoes had come through there and had, had it been across the street and then when it crossed Luetta into our neighborhood, it went up over our top of our house. That's why we didn't have any damage. And it went and it missed all my houses. I had four houses under construction, missed all of them and landed back out in a field between our subdivision and Enchanted Oaks subdivision and did some damage in the woods and then it just dissipated. So I found out up close and personal that my, my authority works on natural storms my authority works on, on any kind of storm, whether it's a natural storm like a tornado or like a hurricane. It works on any storm. You're, you're that type of person. You're the supernatural kind of a person that has authority over all storms. So don't sweat the storm. Just take authority over it.